Okay, this recording we're going to show you how to import the VirtualBox appliances that you're going to use in our class. Okay, so for hopefully you've downloaded them by now or gotten them from me personally. If you've downloaded them, you're going to have to uh, find where you downloaded them. They are available on uh, one of the college's FTP sites and there is a separate video showing you how to get into that and how to pull those down. Okay, so what you want to be able to do is make sure you know where they are. And so what we're going to do is open VirtualBox. Okay, and VirtualBox should come open here in just a second. Again, I'm running inside a virtual machine, so it's running a little bit slower than we might like. So what we're going to want to do is go under File and Import Appliance. Okay, and this will be the first screen where you're going to choose which appliance you're going to import. So I'm going to choose and I'm going to go to where I have mine located and you will see I've got two of them here and I'm going to choose the Windows XP one for now you'll also notice that they're even though they're XP and Server 2003 they're still fairly large okay they're over a gigabyte okay so I'm going to pick the XP one click OK open okay then next And it's going to read it, but the next thing you're going to see is where some place where you can change the name. You change. This is the one figure where you might want to change it down the road. If you have more RAM, now for instance, uh, Windows XP requires at least 512 megabytes for the host machine. Uh, Windows 7 and Windows Vista requires one gigabyte as a minimum. So if you have a four gigabyte machine, let's say you could increase the RAM on on this machine, for instance, maybe to 1,024 to one gigabyte. You would just double click here and type in what you want and hit enter. That's all you'd have to do. Now I don't have that much in this virtual machine, so I'm just going to leave it at 512. But this is where you want to check it. Okay. Most of the rest of these you should be able to leave all by yourself. Okay, just the way they are. And then we can click on import. Now, depending on the speed of your machine, it can take anywhere from four to 10 plus minutes for this to come in. So I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna pause this until it finishes. Notice it says eight, but now drop to six. So it changes quite a bit. So I'm gonna pause this now. Now that it's imported, what we're gonna see is you're gonna see whatever you name that virtual machine appear here on the left-hand side of the virtual box, uh, virtual uh, manager. Okay, and if you single click it, you will see if you have details selected, you will see how we can have all the items here. And you can change them from here as well. You can click, you can right click, for instance, this and click settings, or you can click each individual one, but settings brings them all up. And in a second here, we'll see the settings box. Here it's coming up now. And you can see we can change names. We can change the RAM here. And it gives you a warning when you get over half, half of what the RAM is available. Uh, and all sorts of other things. And one of the things we want to check is you need to have at least 512 meg RAM for, for this particular exercise. But uh, always check that. And depending on how the network is, you may want to, in this case, we have an internal network set up. So these devices cannot go out. Uh, if you wanted to go out, you could sit there and change it from an internal network to either a bridged adapter or a NAT, but for right now, we're just using the internal network, okay? Now, the other thing you should do as soon as you import one of these items is create a snapshot, okay? Now, what a snapshot is, is think of it as just like you're taking a picture. You're taking a settings of how the virtual machine is at this point in time and you can go back to it at any time so this is always good so when we're starting a class you should always have I always like to call them the lab start point so that when you're done with one lab you go back to it and then you can then always be starting with a fresh virtual machine you can't screw anything up so to create a, a, a snapshot right from the beginning here you would go over here and click the snapshots button okay and always you're going to have this section called current state but what we're going to do is we can sit there in this little photo this little picture of a camera here it says take snapshot so we can sit there and click take snapshot what I would do is change the name of that to lab start point and then you can actually put a description down here if you want and then click OK and with the with the virtual machine off it takes very very little time now you can actually create a virtual machine 
while, uh, excuse me, a snapshot while your virtual machine is running, it just takes a little bit longer. And so now, from now on, I can always revert back to this. Okay, so that is how we import an appliance, check the settings, and create a, for a snapshot of our virtual machine so we always have a fresh starting point. So that's going to be the end of this video.